Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about the calcitonin. How this polypeptide hormone can act in bone disorders like osteoporosis. Calcitonin is one of the drug which can be used in the treatment of postmenopausal osteoporosis. In the postmenopausal women, estrogens are not going to be synthesized and estrogens are having some protective action on the bones. They inhibit the demineralization of the bones. But in the postmenopausal women, the bone density is somewhat reduced and bones become fragile because of the increased bone resorption. And in such cases, the calcitonin can be given in order to increase the calcium deposition on the bones. So in the women greater than 5 years of menopause, this calcitonin can be given to prevent the bone deformation. Similarly, calcitonin can also be given to control the hypercalcemia. One of the important role of this peptide hormone is to control the calcium levels within the plasma. So whenever raised levels of calcium are observed because of any physiological disorders like the carcinoma or any other conditions, this calcitonin can be given to control the raised calcium levels within the plasma. Similarly, this drug can also be used in one of the condition Pazet's disease. This is one of the physiological disorder in which the bone formation is going to be accelerated, but it is going to be abnormally accelerated such that it produces an abnormal bone formation as well as resorption resulting in the bone deformalities, bone pain and decreased bone strength. In such conditions again, calcitonin can be given in order to prevent the demineralization of the bones. So in all these conditions, calcitonin can be given, but particularly it can be used in the treatment of postmenopausal osteoporosis. So what is calcitonin? Calcitonin already I have discussed is a 32 amino acid polypeptide hormone. Normally, calcitonin is going to be released when there is an increased levels of the calcium within the plasma. So, in conditions where the plasma concentration of the calcium is going to be raised, in such conditions, the raised calcium can stimulate the C cells within the thyroid follicles. These C cells are going to release the important mediator calcitonin, which can control the calcium levels within the plasma. So, this calcitonin is available as a drug which can be extracted from the fish or birds. Particularly, calcitonin can be extracted from the salmon fish which is called as salmon calcitonin which is having a similar sequence to the human calcitonin but this salmon calcitonin is more effective and more potent compared with the human calcitonin and nowadays we also have synthetic derivatives of this salmon calcitonin which is which is known as salcatonin this is a synthetic product resembling the salmon calcitonin now let us see how this calcitonin acts calcitonin shows important action on the two organs one is the bone and second one is the renal system that is the kidney so on the bone, what is the action of this calcitonin? So bones can undergo the demineralization where the calcium can be removed from the bones. So here the calcitonin is going to inhibit the calcium mobilization from the bones. So the resorption process of the bones can be inhibited by calcitonin. Similarly, within the kidney, the calcitonin can control the reabsorption of the calcium and phosphates. So this drug can inhibit the tubular reabsorption of the calcium as well as phosphate thereby to increase the, these two ions within the urine. That's why calcitonin can control the calcium levels within the plasma. But here the action of calcitonin is mainly related to the bone, which is responsible for the treatment of osteoporosis as well as Pazet's disease. So now calcitonin mainly acts on the bone such that it is going to inhibit the osteoclast formation. These osteoclasts are responsible for the bone resorption. So calcitonin can inhibit this osteoclast formation thereby the bone resorption can be controlled. And when the bone resorption is controlled, the calcium released from the bones can be reduced, which results in the decreased levels of calcium within the plasma. Similarly, it can also promote the osteoblast formation. Osteoblast cells are mainly responsible for the bone formation. So calcitonin can promote the new bone formation such that it can reduce the osteoporosis and fragility of the bones as well as it can increase the bone mineral density. Now let us see how this calcitonin acts at the bone in detail. So at the bone, the bone lining cells are present, but as the bone is undergoing the aging, few of the cells can undergo the deformation such that they are going to form the osteoclasts. These osteoclasts are the deformed bone line cells, which are responsible for the demineralization and increase the fragility of the bones, responsible for the breaking of the bones. So as the osteoclasts are more formed, they can produce the demineralization so that the calcium can be released from the bones into the systemic circulation. In this way, bones can undergo demineralization where the calcium is going to be removed from the bones 
which further increase the bone fragility and decrease the bone mineral density. Similarly, bones can also undergo the remodeling such that they are going to form the new bone line cells. So these are osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are responsible for the bone formation and any deformed bone cells can be replaced with the osteoblasts such that the bone can undergo the remodeling and again bone strength can be increased. Now here this calstonin can bind to the calstonin receptors which are present on the osteoclasts. So when it is going to bind to these calstonin receptors, it produces an inhibitory response on the osteoclasts, thereby it can inhibit the activity of these osteoclasts. And when they are going to be inhibited, the bone resorption process can be controlled by this calstonin. At the same time, calstonin can stimulate the osteoblast formation such that the new bone cells are going to be formed, which again prevents the bone deformation. In this way, calstonin is having some protective action on the bone. What are the side effects? Calstonin can produce few of the common side effects like headache, nausea. This nausea may be associated with the vomiting or sometimes it may not be associated with the vomiting. And dizziness can also be observed. And this drug can also produce few of the painful conditions. It can produce the myalgia as well as back pain, arthralgia and abdominal pain can also be observed with this calstonin. And abnormal lacrimation can also be observed when the calstone is given by intramuscular or subcutaneous route. And there is an increased risk of the malignancies when this calstone is used for a prolonged period. Interestingly, this drug is also given by intranasal spray. So few of the side effects are related to the route of administration. So when it is given by the nasal route, it can produce few of the conditions like the rhinitis. So it can produce some stuffy nose and runny nose. And it can also produce another important condition, nasal bleeding. This nasal bleeding is commonly known as uh, epistaxis. So calcitonin can increase the hemorrhage within the nasal blood vessels, which is called as epistaxis. And this side effect should be carefully monitored when this uh, calcitonin is given as a nasal spray. Similarly, it can produce other side effects like sinusitis, nasal mucosal ulceration. And this is again one more important side effect. Whenever mucosal ulceration is going to be increased, ulcer is more formed, then this drug should be replaced with the other alternative drugs. And it can also produce few of the other side effects like the bronchospasm, which may also be related to a hypersensitive reaction. So these are the various important nasal related side effects, mainly produced by intranasal spray of the calcitonin. What are the precautions? So one of the important precautions of the calcitonin is the hypocalcemia. Just we have seen that the calcitonin can control the calcium levels within the plasma. So calcitonin can induce the hypocalcemia. So when the hypocalcemia is going to be observed in the patients, it can result in few of the symptoms like muscle spasms, paresthesias, loss of sensation, as well as tetany, lack of uh, muscle contraction. And even it can spread the seizures in the patients. So all these are because of the hypocalcemia. So if any patient is already having hypocalcemia, in such conditions, calcitonin can further increase the hypocalcemia, which results in the elevated levels of symptoms. So that's why calcium levels should be checked before the therapy of calcitonin because it can produce the hypocalcemia. And sometimes based on the requirement, we can also add supplements like the vitamin D, which can control the hypocalcemia produced by calcitonin. Similarly, another important precaution is the hypersensitivity. Already we have seen calcitonin can produce few of the hypersensitive reactions. It can produce a swelling of the tongue as well as bronchospasm. And it can also produce few of the serious anaphylactic reactions and anaphylactic shock can be produced by this calcitonin. So if any hypersensitive reactions are going to be produced, then immediately this drug should be stopped. And particularly these hypersensitive reactions may be more observed with the salmon calcitonin, which is obtained from the salmon fish. And nowadays, synthetic derivatives are having somewhat less hypersensitive reactions. Next one is the nasal reactions. All we have seen, this drug can be given by intranasal route. So it can produce the nasal reactions. So two important nasal reactions are the rhinitis as well as uh, epistaxis. If any of these two conditions are observed, again, the calcitonin should be carefully given. And another important precaution is the increased risk of malignancies. So in case of any symptoms of development of malignancies, calcitonin should be withdrawn in order to prevent the severe malignant disorders. Contraindications. Where this calcitonin is contraindicated? So this drug produces a few of the side effects commonly observed with many of the drugs. And when it is given by nasal route, it produces the nasal side effects. 
apart from these side effects, we have already seen one of the important side effect of the calcitonin is the hypersensitive reactions. So this drug is contraindicated in patients who are having the hypersensitive reactions towards the calcitonin. For example, if any patient is observed with a severe bronchospasm, angioedema, swelling of the lips, swelling of the tongue and throat, or any anaphylactic reactions, in such conditions, calcitonin is contraindicated. Drug interactions. Even this drug is used for only if you have the bone disorders. So drug interactions are somewhat less. But calcitonin, because it's going to acting on the kidney, it can interact with the excretion of you have the drugs. Particularly, one of the important drugs is the lithium. Calcitonin can inhibit the excretion of the lithium because lithium is just like the sodium. It is a monovalent. And since calcitonin can affect the tubular reabsorption as well as secretion of few of the ions like calcium and phosphate. It can also affect the levels of lithium. So lithium is not excreted, it is retained within the body, which results in the lithium toxicity. So whenever this uh, lithium is given along with the calcitonin, the dose of the lithium should be reduced in order to prevent the lithium toxicity. How it is given? Calcitonin is given by injection on two different routes. It can be given by intramuscular route, otherwise it can be given by subcutaneous route. And nowadays it can also be given as an intranasal spray. This nasal spray is more convenient compared with the other routes of administration because it is having the patient compliance. Particularly in the osteoporosis, nasal spray can be used. But compared with the other routes which are given by injection, this nasal spray is somewhat less effective. So based on the patient conditions, we can select the route of administration. If osteoporosis can be controlled by intranasal spray, this drug can be given. But if any nasal side effects are more observed in the patients, otherwise, this route of administration is not effective to control the bone disorders. Then we can go for the subcutaneous or intramuscular route. So that's about the calcitonin. Calcitonin is one of a 32 amino acid polypeptide hormone. And this hormone can be given externally by different routes like the subcutaneous, intramuscular or intranasal routes. This drug mainly acts on the two organs. One is the bone and second one is the kidney. On the bone, it decreases the bone resorption. Thereby, it can inhibit the release of the calcium from the bones. And on the kidney, it can inhibit the reabsorption of the calcium and phosphate. Thereby, it can increase the calcium in the urine. In this way, calcitonin is useful in the treatment of post-operative osteoporosis as well as in the condition like the hypercalcemia. And this drug can also be given in the treatment of Paget's disease, which is associated with the abnormal bone formation and resorption. In all these conditions, calcitonin can be given. So that's about this calcitonin. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.